guys, Derek here. Okay, so I've been um, testing and playing around with a theory I had. I have obviously been checking the forums and stuff, and this is uh, my uh, original Prusa Mark II. Uh, I brought it off of a, a, a chap on Facebook. Uh, it was £300 in total. Uh, it didn't have the up-to-date firmware on it which obviously I've put on here and that is about it apart from I've added a Raspberry Pi at the back. That's all I've done. Everything else is still stock. Right, so I've wanted a flex plate on this because it still had the, it's got the Mark 42 bed. I'll just take this off. Okay, so it's got the heated bed Mark 42 which is just a standard heat bed and add the PEI sheet on here. I've taken the PEI sheet off and um, I've also done this. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, let me get to the point first. Okay, one second. So what I will do is, if I can, is lift this to one side. And I don't know if I can zoom in, but what I have underneath here, underneath the actual heat bed, I've actually got some magnets underneath it. Now these are actually done with hot glue. Now I've hot glued these magnets on. I will put all the links and everything down below of what I found and what I've what I've done. Let me just put this back up. So, as you saw, I've got magnets underneath it. And this now becomes a magnetic... This is a flex sheet, which is from Energetic 3D. It's 3D Max PI on this, on this side to define is to limit okay so I can now pop that on there I can also I don't know whether or not you could be able to see this I'll try and zoom in okay so I'll just go through and just show you so the firmware that I've got on here don't forget this is a Mark II so it's a 3.1.0 I can go into calibration and I could do an X, XYZ calibration now let me just do exactly what it says yep place a sheet of paper underneath now in theory I should take this off uh, but I'm just going to see what it's like if it works with it on I'm just going to grab a piece of paper pop it down here now in theory it should try and find the points but I have changed the probe over to an inductive probe as well so let's just see if it if it fi finds anything I might speed this up I might not seeing if I can try and 
it looks like it's found one of the points but this is an inductive sensor now not the original one that came with it so if I now zoom out I'll just let you see what happens There you go. So it found point one. What I'll do, I'm going to pause the video now and I will uh, carry on when it gets past this part because obviously this is going to take a while. I don't want the video to carry on while it's doing this. So I'll pause it now and I will come back. Through the XYZ, uh, XY calibration, now just doing the 9.Z calibration. And there you go. So it's don't, it's gone through the whole of the calibration, seems to be fine. Uh, like I said, um, I will put a picture, or if I can, into the video where I've placed the magnets. As you can see, I've hot glued them on. Now the melting temperature which I've checked of the hot glue is roughly about 120 degrees for it to actually start melting. Now I only print PLA on this so the heat bed is only going to 60 degrees. That's fine for me. I ain't got any issues. I've printed a load of things on here. I even had a print which went on for about 5-6 to six hours which was a fairly large print and it stuck fine. Obviously, all I all I would do is just pull this forward. This would be up, so I just move the Z out of the way, and then I would just pull off the print, flex it, and just take the print off. So this works. Um, obviously. Um, when if you do this a certain mod you might find that it might be different for you uh, when I say different as in the amount you use this say for instance I mean I haven't gone over a more than a, a six hour print with this uh, doing a PLA at 60 degrees on the bed it's been absolutely fine love it now you might want to test it do an ABS or something or a very large print of an ABS and you might find that yeah it might melt the glue holding the magnets on the back of this if that happens I mean you can all, always epoxy them on if you really wanted to uh, but I've just used hot glue as a test of concept and it works I've got no I've had no issues with it since doing it. I have been testing it for a good three weeks now and it's working fine. I thought I'd put this video out. I'll put all the links down to the flex plate and the magnets that I'm using. Hot glue is just standard hot glue, for, obviously from a hot, hot glue gun. And that is it. This is my proof of concept of making a flex build plate for under £30. In the UK I will place like I said I'll put all the links down below I'm not affiliated with anything all the links are down below which will show you um, what's happened uh, uh, how much the items are so obviously you're very welcome to uh, comment down below I will get to all the comments uh, if you do did like this video please like it and share it uh, I'm going to obviously uh, tweet it out um, I'm going to try and tweet, tweet it out and hopefully Mr. Prusa will actually see it himself 
see whether or not he likes the idea. He might come back with a load of technical jargon, but I know that it works. So this is my con proof of concept of making a flex build plate for the Mark II. I mean, I'm guessing, I don't know, I haven't tried it, but I'm guessing you could do it on the same sort of, uh, like an Ender 3 or something like that, of the same sort. Uh, with strong magnets underneath but then again you can buy a flex plate already for an Ender 3 but I'm just saying this is my proof of concept that it does work okay so as I've said uh, if you do did like the video please like it subscribe if you haven't ring the bell for any notifications and comment down below um, and give me your thoughts um, other than that be yourselves. See you later. Bye.